Hello everyone, my name is Roxy and welcome back to more Let's Play Pokemon White 2. We're here now in Nimbasa City and last time around I said we were going to take on the gym. And while that's true, there are a couple of optional things I want to do first just to get a bit more levels while I'm uh, preparing, you know, and stuff like that. Just so I'm a bit better prepared to take on the gym leader. Now first of all you have uh, the subway here. Uh, most of these lead to different uh, battle areas as I've said but there's one line I believe it's the brown line yes this one will lead to Anvil Town actually which is a little extra town so I'm gonna go ahead and board uh, the train now over here in Anvil Town uh, well we have this girl who's missing her pan sage Hmm, and she can't find it. Well, there's actually a guy in uh, Nimbasa City we need to talk with uh, to find her for, or find the Pantage for her. So yeah, we'll be doing that pretty soon. For the rest, you can just talk with uh, a bunch of people here, uh, look at some trains and yeah. Oh yeah, sure, okay, let me explain. Go ahead, this car is a double train. It's a mass produced car from a decade ago. Compared to a single train, the number of parts was reduced so it could be built for lower cost. Hmm, cool. So yeah, he knows all about trains, huh? And there's a turntable there. Huh? You ran out of escape ropes. Hmm, two escape ropes for a revive. No, I think I'm good. I value my uh, revives more. Hmm, and he collects star pieces for peepee ups. Sure. I'll give you a star piece for a PP up. It's pretty good, cool. Uh, you can probably do some more trading with him. Hmm. I think there's some other people that might give you something. 20 Pokeballs for a full restore. Uh, I think I'm good. I don't even know if I have 20, uh, to be honest. Nothing over here, it really looks like there would be something, but I guess not. I guess it's just a misleading little part that makes you think there's an item there. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, varied scenery. I don't know. Maybe. It's also cool how they have uh, Galvantula here already. We won't see those for quite a while in the game still, but you know, they uh, showed them off here. And uh, yeah, you can of course trade items here. Like I've said. I think these guys give you free items somewhere though. Someone. Hmm. Well, just Star Piece Trader, it seems. But I could swear there was someone who gave you an item. Oh, yeah. Is it this guy? Hmm. Oh. Yeah, there we go. We can get a free rare candy. And yeah, the other items you can get is uh, just by trading some items for it. Now, we're, I'm going to quickly run back to Nimbasa City to uh, find this girl's pantsage. So, see you guys in just a moment. What? A trainer in Anvil Town is looking for a Pokemon? You sure have come a long way. Got it. I'll send this little fella to Anvil Town. I appreciate you telling me. Yep, there we go. It's that pantsage. So, I'm gonna go ahead and head back now to Anvil Town and claim my reward, because of course there's a reward. And here we are. Oh, you looked for my Pokemon. Yep, I did. And for that we get Bright Powder, an item that boosts up bug type moves, I believe. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And now Pansage wants to become a real world constructor. That's pretty cute. Now let's go back to Nimbasa City now. And in Nambasa City, I'm actually going to take a right here uh, and exit through here. And uh, we can talk with this guy and we can get a Macho Brace, which will help a lot with EV training. Now, I don't really want to get into EV training now um, because it's, it's a bit too complicated. But yeah, it'll help with that. And then we have here Route 16. Now this is just a small route, there's a couple of trainers here that I'm gonna battle. 
I believe you don't even fight him during the uh, day two. But hey, we get a call. Hello, this is Rexby. It's me. Yeah, you picked up my cross receiver. Hey, it's a little annoying that we can't see each other's faces, isn't it? We wouldn't recognize each other even if we pass in the street. Oops, my colleague is calling me. I have to get back to work. Goodbye. Hmm, that Curtis again. Strange. Well, time for some more battles. And why don't I have this battle? Why don't I tell you guys a little bit about the Pokemon you can find in the uh, grass up there? You can see it off in the uh, a bit up top. And you can actually find a Psychic type here. Uh, if you're playing Pokemon White 2, uh, that Psychic type is Goth. Or uh, in White 2, it's Solosis. Uh, it has great special attack, pretty much just as good as um, the special attack that Espion has, or, or close to it. Uh, and it also has a very nice HP stat, but other than that, its stats are so-so, and it's kind of slow. Um, so that is a little bit of an issue too. Um, so still, I, I'd argue Espion is probably a bit better than Solosis, but Solosis is still a very fine choice. Um, now, if you're playing Black 2, you can instead get Gothita, which is a bit more of a bulky Psychic type option than you've had before. Uh, but honestly, both Espeon and Sigilyph are much better options. So personally, I would not bother uh, going for one. Now, another one you can find here is only one you can only find in rustling grass and that's Imolga, a, a, a flying electric type. So yeah, interesting thing, it's uh, basically a flying Pikachu and it's, it's annoying to fight but honestly, I mean, it has high speed and it has, it's immune to ground types which for an electric type is definitely a nice thing to have but other than that, it's just... Eh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really the biggest uh, fan of it other than that it it doesn't really have good stats other than that and i personally think that pretty much any other electric type is much better so on this route not really the greatest options for you but you know if you wanted one of them you know if you wanted a new psychic type then it can work or if you know the uh the electric types you have had so far aren't really doing it for you then you could always opt to uh get one of these or get an Emolga. Although personally I'm not a fan of it. Now let's have Kazooie finish you off. There we go. And we defeated the backers. Now I believe if we go further to the right here uh, there's that other biker and you have Marvelous Bridge but it's completely blocked off, so we can't go there at all yet. Oh, another biker. You know what? I'm gonna take this guy off on off screen or girl. There we go. That wasn't too tough of a battle. There's a few more things that we can actually grab on this route. First of all, if you use strength, you can push away this boulder. Now, one nice thing about Pokemon Black and White too, and they, this was also in the original Pokemon Black and White, is that boulders will stay pushed. So once they're in a hole, they will stay in the hole for the remainder of the game. So that's definitely nice. And I'm gonna get some more experience. There we are. And there is a hidden item. I believe it's up here. Yep, there we go. A tiny mushroom. Um, I think there's also something else we can get here. I believe it's a TM over here behind the fence. So let's actually walk over to the right here. Yep, there we go. TM66 Payback. It's a pretty nice uh, dark type move that actually hits double if the user hits you or the opponent hits you before you hit them. So it can definitely be nice if you have a slow dark type because it can do quite a bit of damage then. Uh, if we actually go up here, there's another backpacker over there and another bush we can cut away. Uh, yes, we still have time and in our party. Always useful. And we can get a heal ball. Not the most amazing thing, but you know what? It is what it is. Um, furthermore, we have this backpacker here. And I believe we can also go into the lost one first up north. But let's take him out first. 
There we are. And yep, up north there is Lost Arm Forest, but I'm quickly gonna run back and heal before I tackle that. So I'll meet you guys in just a moment. Alright, here we are. Let's go. Now, there are a lot of Pokemon that you can actually find here. So, I'm gonna go over them while I fight this uh, breeder, which you have to fight every time you re enter the route, which is a bit annoying, but you know what? It'll work. Uh, we need to fight something. First of all, there's Combi, which is a bug flying type, and if you get it, make sure it's female, because the male form doesn't evolve and is therefore absolutely useless. Now, even if female combi isn't that great, its main purpose is basically to be a tank, but it doesn't really do it that well because it has way too many weaknesses to really uh, work properly as a tank. Um, and it can be really annoying to train up, so if you want a good tank, you could use it, but I would personally recommend going with an Umbreon. Furthermore, you can get Roselia here, a pretty damn good grass type. It's grass and partly poison too. Um, so yeah, that's definitely nice. Uh, it gets a, it has good, very good special attack, good special defense too, pretty overall decent speed. Um, so yeah, in, in general, it's you know a very nice uh, Pokemon. Uh, it gets good versatility and moves, so yeah, overall one of the better grass types in the game probably, and I can definitely just recommend going for one, because it, it's just very, very nice. Now, what you can get furthermore is one of the three elemental monkeys, Pan Sage, Pan Seer, and Pan Poor. You can get all three of them, you can find them, they're pretty rare, but they're there. Honestly. I'd skip them. You can only find them in rustling grass with a very low percentage, so they're very hard to find. And there's better grass types, there's better fire types, and for Pampor it might be a bit more worth it if you didn't start with Oshawott and you didn't want to get um didn't want to get Vaporeon, then it might be a decent choice. But honestly, that's only for early on, and overall I just can't recommend them. Cause they're just not really good enough. Now finally you have two version exclusives that are well pretty damn good. First of all if you're in black 2 you're definitely in luck because you can get Heracross and this thing is a beast. It's a bug fighting type and probably one of the best fighting types in the game. Maybe even better than Lucario. Heck I prefer it over Lucario. If it wasn't for the fact that I'm playing Y2 I would be using a Lucario or a Lucario, a Heracross, because it's just that awesome. It, it's just amazing. Just keep it away from flying types and it, it will rock your world. If you're playing Y2, unfortunately, you get Pinsir, which is a pure bug type move, but it has pretty much all fighting type moves. So it lacks stack, stab for any of its moves, and that does hold it back quite a bit. Other than that, it's still really good. You know, it has nice stats and everything, but it being a bug type rather than a fighting type just really holds it back in my opinion. So that's kind of a shame. Now let's take out this breeder off, off screen. But now I want to actually leveled up and gain crunch which is a very nice dark type move. So yeah he's a bit stronger now which is always nice to have. We can also get this net ball over here. Um, I believe there's something else though that I want to check. Right this guy. You have a Pokedex. I'm a traveler. I enjoy trekking around the world and talking with various people. By the way, do you know a Pokemon called Zorok? Uh, yeah, I do actually. Great. Are you armed with knowledge so that it won't trick you? Church tries to trust it and be tricked or to live in doubt. I enjoy talking with you. This is a small present. We get TM95 Snarl, which is another dark type move, I believe. Or maybe it's normal. I don't know. They say Zorok shot in around here about two years ago. It changed its appearance of this grassland with its illusion ability and tricked people and Pokemon. It's an outrageous rumor, but a rumor has some truth in it. Every rumor has a kernel of truth to it. And he changes into a Zorok and walks off. That is so cool. I don't know, I just really like that. Oh, there's an item right here. Nice, a leaf stone. That can definitely come in handy. Now that is actually all that I wanted to show off here, so I'm going to actually go back over to the gym, maybe do a bit of training, and then I will see you guys in a little bit when I actually take on the Nimbasa City Gym. So yeah, 
I will see you guys in just a moment. Oh, looks like Banana Wani is evolving. That's pretty much what I was waiting for before I took on the gym. Just to get a bit more power on Banana Wani. Because uh, we were already a little bit under leveled. But I wanted to at least be evolved before I took on the gym. So, Banana Wani evolved into Krokorok and it looks ready to take on the gym. Well, here we are, Nimbasa City Gym. Let's take it on. Oh, what's this? Surprise, right? This gym, speaking frankly, a glittering fashion show in a dazzling stage. Well, for now, I'll give you this. We got a fresh water, as always. Very fresh and refreshing. In this Pokemon gym, we'll have you proceed by defeating the trainers waiting on the catwalk. By the way, electric Pokemon don't do well against ground type poke moves. We know that, we have Banana Wani with us. Oh. But ground type moves don't work against Pokemon Valley Molga, so please be careful. But that's okay, Banana Wani is ready for that. And looks like the spotlight's there. It's the first trainer. Welcome to Nimbasa Gym. A stylish Pokemon battle and fashion show created by Pokemon and trainers is starting now. Well, we'll have to see that. A lot of applause and she moves out of the way. And, well, we can walk onward, but first, I'm quickly gonna see... Do I have a Paralyze Heal? I should have one. Oh yeah, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and just use one. Because I don't want to have uh, Banana Wani paralyzed for this. Let's move on now and... Yep, there's the next one. What do you have to throw at me? Oh, a little spin there and... Are you beautiful as a trainer? Surprise me. I'm quite beautiful. I have two donuts on the side of my head. If that isn't fashion, I don't know what is. Beauty Fleming. Huh, that reminds me of like having phlegm stuck in your throat. That's definitely not something I'd associate with beauty. So that's an uh, interesting name. Let's go for the sand tomb here. Let's see if that takes it out in one hit. Hmm, no, it doesn't quite do it. But it uh, will trap it in there. Hmm, we do le lose a ton of speed from that. Almost makes me want to consider switching out uh you know what i'm just gonna send him again oh it's going for a takedown ah uh, we can take it we can take it easily and this sent him takes him out that's good one down and our moxie will raise our attack so the next one should go down a bit easier especially if we also get a level out of this yeah banana one is gonna be a little bit in front of the rest of the team at the end of this gym but that's okay I'll uh, just put him on the back burner after this and give the others some more screen time it's just that if you have a Pokemon that does well in a certain gym you should use it and Banana Wani definitely does well in this gym another option would be to get a Sand Slash because it can get both like Rock Slide and Dig or something so that can also work very well for you but I went with Banana Wani as you guys know so that's another one out of the way, and I believe that's... Nope, that's one more. Uh, you know what? She's probably going to have some boring electric types, and I'm just going to take her off quickly off screen. Just as I thought, Banana Wani one-hitted both of her Pokemon. And I believe, yep, that actually sets the stage for, well, the gym leader. Alesa. Which looks pretty damn awesome. I, I really like how that looks. But, uh, IFC tried, right. uh, help, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I'm scared. Okay, okay, all jogging aside, I just have to heal up real quick at the Poké Sander. So, let's head up on the stage now and take on the next gym. Welcome to the main stage. My beloved Pokémon and your Pokémon shall compete. We're going to see whose star shines brightest. Let's do this. It's Rexby versus Elisa. And uh, she has an interesting fur coat on, but she throws it off, and well, that outfit underneath is even more interesting. Starting off with Emolga. Yep, this is a flying electric type, so your ground types won't do a thing. If you have Rock Tomb, though, you should be all good. Just use it, and it should be decent enough. And we'll go for an aerial ace that actually hit quite a lot harder than I thought it would and I didn't hit anywhere near as hard as I hoped I would 
that that that's not a good start i'm gonna see how well crunch does it's not gonna be super effective but it is gonna be stab and a lot higher powered yeah that seemed to do a lot better actually it's gonna go for another aerial ace though that's definitely not looking good uh banana wani will need a heal pretty soon but hopefully this crunch takes out emolga yep there we go it did we get our moxie going on Although it could get interrupted because she has one really tricky Pokemon in challenge mode. And there it is, Joltik. Now Joltik is a bug uh, electric type actually. But the sneaky thing about it is that it has energy ball which is a grass type move. And yeah that will like wreck any ground type because it's like 80 power. So yeah that, that's kind of sneaky there Elisa. Kind of sneaky indeed. But we're going to go ahead and try to take it out with Fire Fang. Although, of course, she loves to use Fold Switch. He, she uses it all the time. And it will just be very annoying if you use anything other than um, a ground type. Luckily though, uh, once you have her Emolga taken out, you can just use Dig and such. And you can dodge some and hit her hard with Dig no matter who's out. Although, getting static is never nice, getting paralyzed. So he's gonna full switch out and that's probably gonna be the end of Doge. Yep, unfortunately it is. And do we know what she sends out? Okay, she sends out her Joltik. Hmm. Okay, so even though Kazooie is weak to electricity, I think if we can maybe outspeed it, uh, we'll have a good chance of getting a one hit kill maybe with uh, aerial ace i'm just gonna go for it i want to try it yep kazooie does outspeed so good with that and ooh, no that that didn't hit quite as hard as i had hoped um i'm definitely expecting a volt switch so what i'm actually gonna do is use a super potion here to uh heal banana wani up quite a bit because I think Banana Wani needs the HP. Yep, there we go, Fold Switch. I would never have gotten to move with uh, Kazooie here, so it was pointless anyway. I mean, I could have attacked uh, what comes out next here, this, well, in this case it's a Flavi, but other than that, it would have been pointless. I'm actually gonna go as far as to use, uh, ooh, I don't even need that much HP, do I? Um. Yeah, I'll just use a regular potion. I just want Banana Wani to have full health again. Um, this will probably cost Kazooie his life, but th that's alright. Yep, it it's okay. She's gonna switch into someone else now. Back to Joel, I think, huh? Okay. Um, and I could go for either Banana Wani. Different would be pretty bad here. I think I'm gonna go for Jackaroo because I I don't want to send out Banana Wani against a Joltik because I think that's probably not gonna go over well. I'm gonna go for a quick attack because I think Porcelain would be resisted. Okay, and it goes for a Thunder Wave, but that's okay because we do still have Quick Attack that should still allow us to go first. Yep, it's probably gonna try to full switch. It is okay. That's fine. We should, yeah, we even survived that quite comfortably. Ooh, and here's our final Pokemon, Zep Strika. Now this one is quite a beast. I believe it also has like, um, what's it called? Uh, flame wheel? S something like that. So yeah, that is quite strong. Um, huh, and going into Flavi now. Oh, and we're paralyzed, we can't make a move. That's a shame. Hmm. Well, Jakaru is probably gonna die. I'm gonna see if I can do a quick attack. Nope, unfortunately not. She's going for a Nerve Volt switch. That's gonna finish off Jakaru. Hopefully she goes for her Zepstrika and not for her Joltik. Okay, she does. That's good, actually. I, I quite like that, because I'm gonna switch over to Banana Wani now. And no matter what she does, she can't energy ball me now. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and use 
dig here. Oh, she goes for stomp. Oh, I didn't expect that. Well, that's okay. She still outspeeds me, and stomp doesn't really hit all that hard, luckily. So hopefully dig can take this out. Ooh. No, I was hoping that would do a little bit more. It didn't quite do as much. Okay, well, we can do another dig here. We can get stomped again. We should survive that. Yep. Ah, oh, but we get flinched. Oh, man. Uh, I think we should be able to survive one more. Hopefully. Oh, yeah, just barely. Good job, Banana Wani. Hang in there. Okay, now this should finish it off. Yep, there we go. So now, how many does she have left? Does she still have her Flavi left? I completely forgot if she does or not. But either way, she's probably going to send out her Joltik again. Yeah. Um. Here's the issue, though. Different would die to that. So would Timon. Um... I think I'm gonna switch to different just to heal up Banana Wani. Because I think Banana Wani is pretty important. Okay, let's see how much. Oh, oh, yeah, Joltik is very, very low in health though. So I'm gonna go for return. Hopefully, I have to be. Ah, oh, gung for a hyper potion. Ah, oh, that's sneaky. Okay, well, hopefully, return hits hard. Not anywhere near hard enough. Okay, we got a really heal up uh, banana wine so i'm just gonna go for the moo moo milk that should heal it up completely it'll fold switch it's inevitable Ah, oh, different goes down but that's okay jolty goes back she has to switch to her fluffy and we're gonna go ahead and switch over to banana wine now and we're just gonna have to do it we're just gonna have to take both of them out with banana wani here so I'm going to start with a Sand Tomb, hopefully kill Flaffy off without getting hit. Yep, there we go, perfect. That will give us a little bit of a power boost. And hopefully we're faster. I just need to be faster this one turn. I should have, in retrospect, I should have used like an X speed. But okay, uh, Dig hits harder. Okay, yes, we outsped. Okay, hopefully we can one hit kill. Uh, with banana wine now because energy ball would probably kill banana wine yes there we go good job banana wine we took down our joltik and with that all of our team is now down we shocked her true and true well now you you're an even more wonderful trainer than i expected your sweet fighting style swept me off my feet take this and we get the Bolt Badge, I believe it is, or Fault Badge? Bolt Badge. I think it's Bolt Badge. We'll see in just a moment. Yeah, Bolt Badge. Also, we'll get the one TM that um, she used a whole lot. Yep, Fault Switch. Very nice on uh, Electric types, though. Don't get me wrong, but in this battle, it's kind of annoying how much she abuses it. But yeah, that's pretty much all that she has over here. So let's uh, head out now and hmm, walk with you. Woo, wow. We're getting quite some applause. They really liked our show. I'm telling you guys, Dunce on the side of your head will be the new fashion. Shining example of a trainer. Since that's what you are, you should be able to collect all the gym badges and reach the Pokemon League. Then you and your Pokemon will shine even brighter. That's the plan. Now let's head out here and with that I'm actually going to go ahead and call this an episode. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed it then please do consider subscribing for more videos because plenty more Pokemon Y2 is just to come. We're only halfway done with getting our badges. And if you enjoyed this video then you know leave it a like because that's always much appreciated. Because next time we're going over to the northwest in uh, Nimbasa City and head over to Route 5. So I will see you guys then.